we're all here today to talk and look at what does master's union at least the admissions perspective how does master's union look at an ideal applicant and i'm not sure how many of you are subscribed to the admissions blog that we have we'll be putting in a link in the chat shortly but we encourage you to go there and have a look because this topic was covered and released today but we'll be talking about this in the session as well and it might not be exactly what you expect uh we might be looking at certain different aspects as to what you might be used to just to you know kind of give an initial preliminary disclaimer let me just say that our evaluation process is completely holistic and you'll see what that means when we go ahead later on all right so going ahead and getting started with the session first some hygiene checks for everyone i'd encourage everyone uh, there's about 150 of us on the call today have a look and you know be completely clear and thorough with the following four things that i've mentioned here the first is the eligibility criteria everyone should know that we are a post graduate program that means you have to have completed or are in your final year of your undergraduate degree we will be beginning by may in 2022 so i would encourage everyone that i hope you meet this particular eligibility criteria that it is a post graduate degree and you have your undergraduate certificate sorted in terms of other criteria as i mentioned before in previous webinars you need to have taken either the cat gmat or gre or our own entrance exam which is the mu bat that we offer at the end of the r1 cycle finally in terms of work experience we do look at students who are freshers who have zero to two years of work experience as well as older students who have 10 15 20 years of work experience as well however our average age uh, or average years of work experience we found is at about three so two to four years of work experience is what has been the average in the last two cohorts that have come here so that's about the eligibility and the criteria Moving on towards the admissions process. For the admissions process, everyone should know that there is an application that they have to fill out and complete. How you do this is you go onto our website, you log in, make an account, you register, and you verify yourself. That's very important. You won't be able to proceed with the application without doing a verification, whether that's either on your email or on the mobile through an OTP. Ensure that you verify yourself before going ahead and starting out with the application. And in the application, you'll see we collect a lot of information like your personal details, your academic details, your professional details. So there are a couple of things that we're looking at in terms of your evaluation process. After that, what we see is some other sections in our application, uh, including the essay section. The essay section is very important. You'll see two prompts there and uh, an ability to choose uh, between options in those certain prompts. So we really look for your communication and critical thinking skills through this essay section. Apart from that, you guys are also looking at uploading your CVs, uploading other additional documents that you feel is required to show your candidature or express better candidature for master's union. So make sure you go through the application process an application quite thoroughly and uh, put a dedicated amount of effort however how, you know depending on your discretion however much you feel is necessary so do go ahead with the same after the application process everyone who has completed their application if you've not chosen the cat gmat or gre as the score for us to look at we will be administering the mu bat exam which is a masters union business administration admissions test this will be done on the weekend after our round one deadline. Our round one deadline is on the 23rd. So you can expect this exam to be held in the last weekend of January or somewhere around there. That's when we'll be administering the MUBAT exam. That is a 90 minute online examination that can be taken from home. There's just some instructions in terms of downloading some software. So all of that can be taken from home. It can be taken from your own particular device or laptop. So that is about the admissions process. That's a first trunk of evaluating a candidate, which is your application plus your MUBAT examination. Students who then qualify and you know go to the next level after these two evaluation processes will be going into the interview stage. And in the interview stage, uh, you know, as most of you have read on our website, you will be interviewed by masters or members in the upper management at Masters Union. 
and you know your fitment your application there will be different elements that will be checked there are uh, you know different reviews of what the interview process was like so i would encourage everyone to go online and uh, search about how they can best look at their interview okay that's the admissions process now finally coming to the deadlines it's very important i i mentioned this before our round 1 deadline is on midnight on the 23rd of january so everyone on this call you know i'm assuming everyone's interested in admissions which is why you've joined this i hope everyone's applications you've at least started them your good way in terms of filling them out have uh, you know only a few things to look at because it does take an average of about 7 10 or 15 days depending on your own uh, kind of preferences to fill the application out so that's something that we highly encourage everyone on this call to have at least started your applications so our deadline just as a reminder our deadline is on 23rd jan on midnight all right in terms of fees and financing i'll talk about financing before so in terms of financing you'll see on our website which is mastersunion.org slash admissions if you scroll all the way at the bottom you'll see a section on scholarships and financial aid so in scholarships you'll see the options to choose which scholarship you apply for within the application itself uh, it's going to be step six seven or eight one of the two so you're allowed to select two scholarship uh you know elements that you're allowed to apply for a maximum of two from there whichever one you feel that you're a correct fit for and certain scholarships do require you to upload supplemental essay as well so you'll have to look at whichever scholarship you're applying for and that particular requirement if it doesn't require you to do anything you know feel free to go ahead and proceed with the application however there are certain scholarships that require you to have a supplemental essay that's also uploaded so apart from the scholarships we also have financial aid for our students we have products and partnerships with hdfc with bajaj with access so i'd encourage everyone to view the section there look at the product and if you have any questions whatsoever we have some email ids and numbers listed there of our representatives so feel completely free to give them a call say that hey i'm a masters union applicant these are my doubts these are my queries and they will sort it out for you so i hope that clears out most of the hygiene checks that we had to get underway now coming to the bulk of what i want to talk about is i'm i'm calling it the search for everything but this is what we look at for in an ideal masters union applicant and as i said before you might be thinking about it being certain things related to academics or work experience or entrance exam scores but honestly that's not the cause we see that we look for certain qualitative aspects and that's what i'll be outlining here and if you feel that you can bring these into your application and have a demonstrable kind of showcasing of these things we think that should hold you in good stead for your masters union application all right so going ahead the first thing that we feel that is really important or that we look for in an ideal candidate is that he or she is enterprising as an individual and what do i mean by this there are two things that i think you know constitute what an enterprising person does number one is the opportunities that you've been given right everyone understands that they are from different contexts uh, different backgrounds they have different resources that they've grown up with but what have you done with the opportunities that you've been given right what have you done with the platform that you've been given as well another element in terms of background is a lot of students ask us about oh i'm not from an iit i'm not from a bitspilani i'm not from a stevens do i have a shot at getting admission at masters union and the answer is yes see even if you are from let's say a, a top tier college and have not really made use of your time there or not have made use of opportunities that you've had there as compared to someone who's say from a, a unbranded college right and who's really really had a lasting impact there and has say a lot of leadership performance and potential that they can show uh, show to us from their times over there i would say that should hold you in good stead so people who are enterprising they made use of their opportunities regardless of their circumstances that's one of the top qualities that we are looking for in an ideal masters union applicant the other one is that you are opposing you are open to opposing ideas and views and this is something that's really necessary in a classroom setting 
especially in an academic classroom setting where you're there with people from different backgrounds, right? People coming from different geographies, different academic and professional backgrounds. So you'll see that there are a lot of different opinions and a lot of different experiences that people are coming up with. For example, talking about personal finance to, you know, as someone who's a fresher or at uh, 21, 22 years old, compared that to someone who's 35, 36 year old, has a family that they're taking care of. There will be very different conversations on a personal finance topic or, or certain topics like that in terms of taking things into perspective. So you, we know we are looking at people who can generate, let's say, healthy debate in the classroom. And even, you know, that element of peer learning, we feel that that, ex that is extremely important to generate amongst your cohort. So this is something that we think people should be open to. This is something that will be looked at in our interview stage as well. So are you, oppo are you open to, you know, opposing ideas? Are you open to changing your view or changing your stand on something? And I'd just like to stress, this is, again, because of the diversity of the classroom of a master's union cohort. As I said, you know, freshers, people from work experience, people from all across different parts of India, people from different courses, whether they're lawyers, engineers, people from a business background, and even different professional experiences. You know, people from, as I said, absolutely fr freshers to people who are, uh, you know, handled large teams and large products before. So that's the kind of classroom setting you'll be getting into. And this is a quality that we look for as a must. Uh, or as one of the most important qualities in an ideal applicant or ideal candidate. The other is that they are humble and are open to being coached. Uh, we think humility is an extremely important factor or quality that an applicant should particularly possess. And I keep coming back to the peer learning angle of it, right? Uh, you have to be open to being coached. Do understand that our classroom pedagogy is different to school or different to an undergrad university where you had professors who came and hounded you continuously about whether you've done your work or not done your assignment. That is really not going to be the case over here. Over here, everyone is an adult. Everyone has a responsibility. You've been given a platform to perform. So you have to you know, very much seize your opportunity and perform and use that chance that you've been given. So you know, we see that. Um, in the classroom, especially when you're being taught by masters who are individuals with, you know, industry experience, CXO level individuals who have run different teams before, who've synthesized different products before, they are coming and giving you instruction in the classroom. So to learn from them, you have to be open to being coached, regardless of whatever advice that they might give. You have to trust in their experience. You have to trust the fact that in whatever sector they've been at, they've been in, you know, you've, they've, they've been there for such a long time. They've seen all sorts of different kinds of people and all sorts of different kinds of circumstances. And that entire experience has been accumulated and given to you in a, in a use case of a business school classroom. So try to use that, try to synthesize all of that information for your own personal development. And I think humility as, uh, you know, a value for someone to have um, is extremely important when interacting either with the masters or with their peers. And, you know, just talking about class or talking about lives or talking about uh, what the future is going to hold. I think that element of peer learning is something that's heavily stressed upon. And we want students or we want individuals who can add to that element of peer learning within the master's union upcoming cohort. Moving forward. You are curious and open to learning new things. This is extremely, extremely important for us. If you are someone who is, you know, pondering unanswered questions and uh, going to Google and researching different kinds of things, or someone who is a voracious reader in general and consumes a lot of news or consumes a lot of research or has publications that, you know, two, three publications that you're subscribed to that continuously consumes content, we think that should hold you in good stead, right? We need people who are curious individuals who want to be inquisitive, whether it's where the coursework or if it's with the, let's say, external components of or the co-curricular components that occur at Masters Union. We do look at people who are curious and open to learn new things. And this is, again, coming back to the classroom context, extremely important because we see that in our classroom, as I said, 
there are industry professionals and industry stalwarts, I should say, coming to teach you rather than a typical classroom setting that you might have experienced in college or in school before. So we are looking for people who have that kind of intellectual and inquisitive bent of mind who can uh, be certainly, you know, very proactive and uh, very engaged with the learning process, not just for themselves, but for the cohort in, you know, in, the, in, in its entirety. So that's, I would say, another very important quality that we also look at. And the last two things that I'd like to mention over here. You are motivated to create impact. This is something that again uh, comes up now, now and again is the level of motivation and level of drive that a student should have. I mentioned earlier that you know the forum that Masters Union has, it's essentially uh, you know very different to something that you would have found in school or university where everyone is treated as an adult, everyone is given freedom, everyone is given independence and everyone is most importantly given responsibility. So if you, you know, want or if you're interested in something else that your friends are not interested in, you have the option of tailoring your own curriculum and tailoring the kind of projects that you want to do and the kind of outcomes that you want to get out of master's union. The extremely important bit is that you need to be motivated and driven to do the same. I'm repeating it. You have to be motivated and driven to do the same. Master's Union is going to give, be giving all of its students lots and lots of challenges, whether that's academic challenges, co-curricular challenges, stuff related to your venture initiation project with, this, with, you know, with entrepreneurship, or whether it's a startup weekend or a hackathon. There's always things that are going around on campus. And that happens because our students are motivated, they're driven, they're ambitious, and they really want to make use of their time here and have as much of uh, a takeaway, <clears throat> as much of a takeaway as they can from their master's union experience. I also feel that being motivated and driven adds to the collaborative nature or collaborate, collaborative environment of the institution. So if everyone is driven, you, you're surrounding yourselves with people who want to do the same kind of thing, who want to reach the same kind of career goals, let's just put it that way. And everyone who's smart, intelligent, motivated, you'll see yourself change as well, right? It's uh, people often think about internal motivation and willpower. I do think that is a circumstance of your environment or your ecosystem that you currently are in, whether it's a poor workplace or a poor set of friends that you have or not, are not as motivated. If you step into the master's union ecosystem, you'll see that everyone is doing many, many things at the same time. And, you know, that's something that, by nature will seep into you, will osmos into you, that value of being enterprising, that value of being motivated and, you know, just getting out there and doing more and more and more and more. So I hope that kind of makes things, clear. actually, you know, one more thing I should mention is if someone is not motivated, that really drags others down as well. So what we see and what we actually, what we really don't want to see from any of our potential students is let's just say an ability or uh, you know an asterisk attached to their work ethic, if I want to put it that way, that we know in the future that this person could compromise in terms of, or could drop in their levels of motivation, their drive, their ambition. So we want someone again, who is you know passionate about success, who's passionate about being uh, the best, who's passionate you know, and ambitious about wanting to achieve really unprecedented targets that they've set for themselves because master's union is a platform that can help you get closer to those ideals right that comes uh, that leads me to come to our last element which is you you i'm, I'm sorry there's a typo over here but you exhibit strong leadership performance and potential right that's something that is really really important in our eyes is leadership performance and leadership potential. Obviously, leadership is something that, um, how do I put it? It comes across in different ways. <clears throat> you don't necessarily have to have work experience to be a leader. It could be, uh, again, set into context, right? It could be, you could be the captain of a sports team, right? You could uh, be someone who's leading a volunteer drive. You could be someone who's started their own firm on the side and is, is working towards that and is has raised uh, or you know has achieved a reasonable amount of success in the same so leadership doesn't really exist in a very traditional definition as per se 
so whether it's different elements of you know sports volunteer work social work uh, you know your own personal projects or startups we would encourage you to show us that you have leadership potential and uh, this is you know very important for us because it shows us that we can work with you to create you uh, to create your profile or to create your personality to be someone who enjoys and tackles hard problems in the future we want our students or our alumni to be at the cutting edge and at the intersection of technology and management both and given the the pace of the world and how dynamic it is we see problems coming in every year almost so to tackle those hard problems those challenges we feel that you have to have strong leadership potential if not strong leadership performance so i hope i made myself clear that leadership can be measured through different contexts please make sure that your context is elaborated on in your application so we can understand your leadership potential or your performance if you had prior leadership experience and again this is oriented towards creating you to be an individual who can take on big challenges in the future and you know handle big teams in the future so that is the search for everything let's just say the qualitative aspects of what we're seeking however i know most of you guys who are on the call today and i know that you wanted me to talk more about what to keep in mind for your application so there are three things that i've kind of digested it down to and i think if you keep these three things within your head while filling out your application that would hold you in good stead the qualitative aspects we discussed earlier obviously are aspects that we look within a person's or within a personality of an applicant let me put it that way but these things are specifically for writing your application and uh, let's just say ways to orient your application to make it uh, as helpful or as kind of to put your candidate put your candidature at the highest level as possible so going ahead the first thing that we look for is demonstrable academic or professional experience and the key word here you'll see in all these three points is demonstrable right so uh, we want students who you know have had quantifiable success with both academic and professional experiences it's not enough to say that hey i'm a curious person or hey i'm a person who's good with numbers and just leave it at that we like to see stories we like to see anecdotes we'd like to see data related to what claims that you're putting forth if you were you know if you're someone who i don't know made the company's revenue go 200x over the last 3 uh, years uh, then you know you outline that you show the data you show your anecdotes you write the stories and make sure that you're establishing the correct context for the same so again demonstrable academic and professional experience we want this to be quantified or to be able to be told to us through an anecdote or a story so do keep this in mind for your application for sure the second thing and this is why i stressed on the essay section so much is demonstrable communication and critical thinking skills you'll see that our essay topics are not the most traditional essay topics that are out there and what they're looking for is how creative can you how creatively can you engage with the topic how can you communicate your own ideas and thoughts and most importantly your own authentic self how does that come across in your essay and finally how critically are you thinking about this topic even beyond that we're looking for you know structure in your thought or clarity of thought how is your arguments structured is there a coherence between your first and second argument so especially for the essay section i would really encourage everyone to you know put some effort and emphasis on the same to make sure that you're most authentically highlighting yourself through the essay section and you know i i shouldn't say this but i'll be explicit and say this please do not use any external services or copy from the internet we obviously have multiple plagiarism tests that will put your essay through and will figure out if you kind of sourced it from an external place so please do attempt this yourself and again this is what we're looking for from your essay section is demonstrable communication and critical thinking skills through the arguments that we put forth and finally demonstrable leadership performance or potential 
this is something that i've mentioned before as well but i think this you know will work in good stead for your current application as well why i say that is because you know any business school this is not true for masters union this is a quid pro quo arrangement it's a transaction that happens at the end of the day you are trying to convince us to invest into your future that is your main job with the application you have to convince us masters union that we should invest into your future similarly masters union should also invest into people that can invest into its future people who can be successful business leaders or leaders in the domain of technology any industry people who are you know those people who are tackling challenging problems who are at the cutting edge those are the kind of people that masters union wants to take into take into its cohort so coming you know trying to synthesize that into one bucket i i had written leadership performance or potential again context might be different how you've made use of your opportunities your past experiences coming to masters union you have to convince us that you know masters union is going to be an inflection point on my career arc where it's going to take it you know to a completely different level and when you're at masters union actually act that way be someone who is motivated driven at the same time someone who's humble and curious and i think you know these two three things should hold you in good stead not just for your application but for your experience here